Maybe you are the one we are waiting for. Jesus suffered. God did not spare him. Why would he spare me if my suffering would result in good for you? If my suffering is the means that God would use to bring even one person to himself, it is an honor for me to suffer. Does that seem strange? I suppose it does. But really, it is the only way that all of this makes any sense at all. A God who sees my suffering, but is unable or worse, unwilling to spare me? A God who sees my suffering but allows it with no greater purpose or hope? My God is able to save me, and he will, but save me from what? From a life without him. There is a place where God is not. It is a place where there is nothing good, not even a gentle rain or a child's laugh. It is a place where everything that we despise about this world, the evil, the injustice, is the rule, with no exceptions. Hell is a physical place where God is not. Instead, he will bring me to a perfect world where he is, heaven, where life is full of wonder, adventure, and joy, everything good for all eternity. My God is able to save me, and he will. This suffering is temporary, and the life I will live in eternity will make all this seem light and momentary. As one speaker explained, God allows in his wisdom that which he could easily prevent by his power. God allows in his wisdom that which he could easily prevent by his power. I chose the title of this talk, Death is Not Dying, A Faith That Saves. The first part came from one of my favorite preachers and authors, Charles Spurgeon, who I realize is not even on the book list in front of you, but you can't go wrong if you find anything by him. <laughs> and the second came from another of my favorite teachers, our pastor at Westside, Norm Funk when he recently posed the question from James 2.14, can that faith save? And pointed out that the most important word in that verse is the word that. Can that faith save? We all have faith in something, but not all faiths save. The faith I have saves. So when I say that death is not dying, the part of me that will die is only a shell. The next few weeks or months will not be pretty. Bone cancer is intensely, intensely painful. And I am already bedridden for almost the entire day, taking three, sometimes four different medications to control the pain. Liver cancer causes intense nausea. Last Saturday, I woke up, and I instantly had to run to the washroom to throw up. I did not stop throwing up all day. And just last week, when we learned that the cancer has spread to my skull, it made sense, because it has started affecting the nerves in my face. I have not felt hungry in more than two months. Any food I do eat is forced down but it will not always be this way. Soon I will become too weak or in too much pain to get out of bed at all. It will become harder and harder to eat and drink. My body and the cancer will fight over the few calories that I do consume, and eventually the cancer will win and I will starve to death. That is the most likely scenario. I have lived a seemingly perfect, picture-perfect life from the outside looking in. And in truth, I have been very blessed. But in my life, there have been many difficult things that the Lord has allowed. I have known the shame of being sexually abused. I have made poor decisions in relationships and have hurt others and have been hurt as a result of them. I have known the searing pain of loss with the death of a loved one. I have been diagnosed with cancer twice now, 
and the second time, barring a miracle, will end my life before I reach my 38th birthday. In his providence, God has used the tough things in my life to draw me closer to him, to show me his great love, and to teach me many things. I have learned that I am not perfect, and I have the scars to prove it, 13 of them. And they serve as a physical reminder of a spiritual reality that I can never be perfect on my own. I need a savior. I have learned that the greatest evidence of God's love is seen when I stand at the foot of the cross. He took my shame upon himself and rescued me. I have learned that being a Christian is not just hope for the future, although it is most definitely that, but that it is the joy of knowing and trusting in a God who is loving and faithful no matter what the circumstances. So when I say that death is not dying, death will not kill my soul. It is eternal, just like yours. It is just this physical body that will die, but even it will be raised again, just like Jesus and it will be better than the one I have now. Like everything, it will be better because God is gonna make everything new. And I know this, why? Because I know God, I know myself, I know the gospel, and I know my purpose. I know I have a faith that saves because my faith is in Jesus alone.